Hello there. That is not near automata or automata music. That is God Hand music. <laughs> but uh, I, I just wanted to make this video because I feel like we have a game worth looking forward to, guys, and that's a pretty awesome statement to make. This is near uh, the sequel to near. Uh, technically, it could be near two. I'm not too sure how you would say it, uh, but it's near automata and or automata, which whenever I say that it makes it sound like I'm saying tomatoes which is why I'm really reticent to say it because uh, the whole day of sex thing, which deus ex, I mean how else do I say it with my filthy language? It sounds rude doesn't it? it? Sounds like I'm talking about something I'm not. So this is the same thing, I don't want to be calling this near tomato, which I might say just for the simplicity of it but shall we get into this video? It's been a minute. This is the demo available on the PlayStation 4. It is about half an hour long it enables you to play the, I don't know if this is the beginning of the game, but there's a, a bunch of tutorials, there's a bit of traversal, there's some combat, there's some sideways perspective combat, and then there is a, a fight against a big boss at the end, and a bit of a mini boss at the beginning here. You get access to three weapons, the two swords, the heavy sword and the light sword, and her bare hands. Uh, you can also use the little robot to shoot, which I keep doing whenever you see that big red... Uh, menu propping up saying you do not have this ability just yet. That's because I'm trying to use a move I don't have. Uh, this gameplay that you're watching is just one I captured last night. It's nothing brilliant, guys. I'm not very good at the demo. Um, it's one of those things where uh, I've been playing a lot of different types of games, so coming back to something that is very Bayonetta-esque is, is an interesting transition coming away from something like Yakuza, which is nothing like that in, in how it plays. So it's definitely going to take some time to warm up to it, but once you do, it's a really familiar experience. My thoughts on this so far are it's everything that I wanted Turtles to be. Because if you don't know, folks, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutants in Manhattan, it was a platinum game uh, developed by one of the uh, other studios within the studio, one of the different teams, and I was really excited for it because I thought it was going to be like what Transformers Devastation were or what, like, what Legend of Korra was. These Bayonetta-esque action games that go in a different direction with a different style and I was really willing to, to experience another because I really liked Transformers and then Turtles was just something completely different and I, and I don't like it at all. I can't even play it. I find it just to be appalling. Then I played this one so this is done by the same director as Metal Gear Rising and you can really tell there are a lot of aspects of this game that I think are probably going to translate directly into the full game that are going to tell us exactly what kind of game it is. The first things you're going to notice are, of course, there are some other elements to this. Uh, this is interesting too, if you watch this. I missed the final hit, so it doesn't class as an execution, so that dude's still technically alive, uh, which is interesting. I didn't know you could do that until I did it. Uh, all I'm doing here is I'm shooting these people. Uh, I'm shooting them because it enables me to do an execution move when they're low life and I wanted to show as many of them off in this playthrough as I could. Because this is, I can call it a walkthrough even though you don't really need it. Uh, that right then was, was weird detection. Because you'll notice, uh, when the enemy's eyes glow they're going to do an attack. Uh, this particular enemy has two attacks. He has uh, quite a quick punch and he has this flurry of, of arm swings where his arms become helicopters. And it has a lot of active frames on it. But the, the dodge in this game is very generous, so if you dodge towards an attack, you will get that... Uh, the, it's the, the signify to tell you that you did a good dodge is the character will split up into kind of phantoms of herself. And whatever you press after that moment will dictate what she does. So if you press square when you're using the fast sword, you will launch them into the sky and do a flurry in midair. I think uh, it might be tied to pressing square a few times, but if you do the light attack, it does a launcher with that weapon. If you do a heavy attack, it generally does a hard-hitting move where she throws the sword and it spins off into the distance. If you get that dodge and you press the shoot button, you will do that move you witnessed me doing just a moment ago where I put the robot in front of me and I fired and it did a lot of damage. Those are kind of the three presets for the reposts. I did, don't know if I tried the bare-handed one, but the bare-handed one I think is just a couple of heavy punches. Uh, definitely something to experiment with. But a lot of it is real similar, guys. Like, the, the timing on the, the dodge to get that 
is is very simple. It's very easy to do. It's not like dodging with Jean in Bayonetta where they made it really tight. You have to pretty much get the bat within or the crow within to get those dodges, which is as close to perfect as they need to be. And even then, there's some wiggle room, even if it is very precise. It's nothing like that. It's it's a, probably closer to Metal Gear Rising, which would make a lot of sense. Once you do that move, you, you're able to do these quite powerful uh, transitions into juggles, but there doesn't seem to be anything too much to do in the juggle state at the moment, because we have a very simplistic character with not too many abilities and not too many skills. So. It can be easy to say that the combat at the moment is, is quite simple. And the reason I would say this is when you do square combos, she does the same combo every time it seems. There doesn't seem to be too many modifiers because when you press triangle to add a heavy on it, it does the same ender. So it makes me think that uh, either there's some part of it that I'm ignorant of, which could be the case, or that in the main game you're going to get special commands that enable you to do special moves and the combos are just there to be doing something while you're waiting to dodge a move and get a critical or you know while you're waiting for something else to happen. A lot like in Metal Gear Rising where a lot of the times you would just beat up on somebody, keep on hitting them, watch them and the moment you saw them do an attack you'd do the parry and then you'd just do the Zandatsu and win. But there were also those commands you could do, weren't there, that could do those cool moves if you wanted to. So the focus is less on the impetus of having ridiculous juggle state combos like something like Bayonetta, where you're constantly doing different inputs of X and Y, and instead it's, it's kind of bringing it down to something that's more approachable. I don't know if this is going to be true for the full game. I'm looking at the suite of options that they have, where there's a ton of information about abilities and skills and equipment and weapons and stuff, and I'm hoping that that's going to add some of the complexity that I feel that the game uh, on face value seems to be lacking, as I do uh, the juggle uh, counter after a dodge. That's the triangle one, just there. A couple of other things you can do with the weapons is you can hold the button to do a, a specific moving forward attack. Uh, on the light sword, it does uh, kind of like a, a skating on your knees, spinning twirl attack, and with triangle on the heavy sword, it does kind of like a stinger, uh, which which looks quite cool. And there's launch properties on certain parts of the animation, but I couldn't really tell you which because I'm not too uh, sure at the moment. There's plenty of more experimentation needed to be done with this demo. Uh, but the enemies that shoot the orbs at you are going to be remnants of the original Nier because the original Nier had a lot of shmup elements and this game is going to be uh, using those and using them quite interestingly as I take a, a big shot there by a blob from off screen. You can cut the blobs, you can dodge through the blobs and you can shoot the blobs uh, or you can just navigate them uh, however you choose to. As I do a couple of combos there with the triangle. You can also hold the shoot button while you do combos and with a little bit of a you know a dexterous thumb on the analogue you can proceed to, to shoot the enemies at the same time as attacking them, which is very reminiscent of Virgil in Devil May Cry 3, where you could repeatedly fire his summon swords while doing your moves just to stack up insane amounts of damage. And you can do the same thing here if you want to, uh, only it's potentially less effective because you have to aim it here, and uh, that's a product of the difficulty, which I should probably talk about. So you're watching hard currently. Um, the only thing I know about hard is that the enemies might be a bit tougher and that you're not able to lock on. Uh, I don't understand why they've removed lock on as a feature of difficulty, to me that sounds really bizarre. But there's a lot of bizarre things in this demo so it's difficult to judge it based on the game or just based on this little taster that they've given us. Uh, you're going to notice I'm not going to be picking up many of the items or doing any of the chests because all of them involve healing items and if it was up to me I wouldn't use them. Uh, but at this moment in time there's a skill on the character that automatically uses them, and I'm not too sure if you can turn it off, I'm going to test that later on. Uh, but suffice to say, whenever you take too much damage, the game is going to drop nano paste effectively and, and save your ass. and uh, I can completely understand this for players who are not experienced in action games and who need a little bit of help to get through, but I don't want that, and I would rather never beat the demo than beat it using items. And you're going to see me use items in this run because it's the product of the beast. Uh, the game is pretty challenging in, in some ways, you know, it's really easy to take a hit and you, you get damaged a lot from taking stray hits. I'm going to get hit by the boss later on and it does about 80% of my life on a laser attack that I, I'd never even seen before, I don't think. And if I had, I wasn't paying attention because I did not see it coming at all and it hit me straight in the face. But there's another difficulty on the demo called Very Hard. And you might be thinking, well, 
Don't you usually play on the hardest difficulty, Chris? Isn't that kind of your shtick? And in some ways it is. And that's the first thing I did when I when I put this demo on. Uh, I jumped straight into very hard, and the first hit I took put me back to the main menu. Because for some bizarre reason, uh, the game doesn't have any checkpoints in this demo. And I'm hoping that that's not anything to do with the finished product, because if it is, I'm never going to play a very hard mode. I do not want to beat an entire game in one sitting, regardless of how good that game is. It's just not the way I do it. Uh, I'm all for no damage. I think no damage is a is a task and a challenge that people should try if you never have because it can make you play a game completely differently and it can make you appreciate different aspects of the game. But if you take a hit and it boots you to the fucking main menu where you have to load to get there and load to get back in, I'm not game with that and that's a terrible application of this demo. I don't know who chose it, but Platinum, it's a mistake. It's going to put people off playing the hardest difficulty and guess what? Nobody plays hardest difficulties anyway, so all that attention that you you put into these games to make sure those hardest difficulties are there to challenge that hardcore fan base, there is 90% of the players who will touch your game will never go near it because people don't. I looked at a trophy the other day for Arkham Asylum. Arkham Asylum is an easy game on hard. It's not very difficult. There's about two fights in it that'll kick your ass unless you've learned how to play the game, but for the most, you can have a rather comfortable time. I generally play that game without upgrading my life because that's the most fun for me because then it feels like if I make a mistake it matters. Every other time you've just got buckets load of life and the checkpoints are very generous. 6% of people have beat that game on hard. 6% of people have the trophy for, for beating that game on hard. 6% of the entire player base of that game. Baffling. Now imagine an eclectic Japanese game that's actually very demanding and challenging. No bugger's gonna play. And it breeds us to this wonderful moment here. This is the second thing about the demo I hate. When you're low life in this game, it changes the screen to black and white to signify that you're, you're dying. And, it, and it's got all these kind of artifacts that are happening with the screen where the noise is, is being applied. And then I get hit by an enemy and it auto heals me. Why, why, does it, why are games obsessed with fucking with our vision when we're dying? There's no need. We mastered this mechanic way back when. Games had life bars, when your life bar got to really, really low, it turned red. It wasn't obtrusive, it wasn't epileptic, it wasn't in your face, it wasn't pulling on your leg like an annoying dog. It was just up there if you needed it. And the thing with these games that gets me, folks, is in a game such as this, you are just as deadly when you are one hit away from death than when you are at full life. Because the only modifier is your skill. It has no implication on your character, it doesn't slow you down, it doesn't lower your offensive capabilities, it does absolutely nothing. But these games, they want them to be so visually pleasing and so resounding in the spectacle that they make it so you cannot fucking see. And I want to see. Like right now, this is an awkward angle. But you can get used to it because it's top down. It's like Jurassic Park on the SNES. What a game, you know? I don't mind these moments because it's an interesting perspective and it adds a bit of a twist. And this game's going to do it a lot and I'm going to really appreciate that. But don't fucking blind me when, when I'm dying. At that point, you should be making me look clearer than I ever have. You know, it should be like limitless and I've taken those Bradley Cooper pills. But it's not. Instead, you just frustrate me. But I've kept it in because I wanted to show you a, a good example of, of what the demo is. I was tempted to try and, you know, practice it and practice it until I could get it where I could beat it with no healing. But I don't think that that would be suitable for, for really showcasing uh, the true spirit of the demo. That'll come later if I play more of it and I intend to. Like, I'm going to mess with the camera options to see if I can get some better camera options because I don't really uh, appreciate the camera at the moment. I think it's terrible. You know, if you don't touch it, I think it's fine. But if you start moving it, and I'm one of those people that moves camera all the time and I don't realize I'm doing it, so all, all the time I'm being like, oh, something's bugging me and I don't know what it is, and boom, it's the camera. Oh, the shield dudes. They have two attacks. They have a super fast one, which you cannot react to. You have to preempt. And then they have a slow one, which if you try and preempt it, you'll miss it every time, which I kind of appreciate. I thought that was funny. But the game is solid. It's really solid. I'm, I'm very excited. The only real issue I've had with the demo is A, I don't like the black and white screen. B, I don't like the booting to the menu on very hard when you get touched. Uh, but aside from that, everything else seems seems fun. Like, of course, I've got problems with the camera, but that's something I can adjust to. Uh, is there anything else that stuck out to me? I don't think so. I think I think we're, we're onto something interesting here. Something that's worth mentioning. The game doesn't look amazing. It was never going to look amazing. 
in in its own way, I think it does look amazing. I think it's a very stylized kind of dystopian future esque ghost in the shell, you know, kind of vibe going with it with the dolls and the leather. The character models look fantastic. The enemies are nothing special. The boss is nothing special. The use of fog is kind of egregious. Some of the textures are not going to win any awards, but. I feel like I have to say this because it's important to me. This game feels great. When you press the buttons, they have a, a good punch to them. There's only the double jump and the jump that I think don't convey the right amount of weight to the jump. I think when you compare it to Bayonetta, it just doesn't feel like it pops enough for me. There's not enough oomph to it. Everything else, spot on. You press the button, it responds. You see the animation, you can cancel it at almost any moment with the dodge. The dodge has got good responsiveness to it. It's got generous iframes, makes you feel really, really powerful. Everything you do in this game is 100% tailored by the controls, because the controls are great. They're as good as you are with them, and that is something that every game should aspire to be. So, with that bearing in mind, I don't think the visuals have to be ridiculous. I think the graphics look fine. They do exactly what they need to do. They enable us to ogle this fantastic woman's bottom, and then they enable us to kick robot ass, and that's what this game's gonna do really well. The combat, the gameplay, the precision. Visually, it's not gonna do much. We've got a lot of browns, a lot of greys, a lot of fog, a lot of rust. You know, it's, it's kind of your, your generic looking... Oops, that was not a good dodge. Look at that. Big, big damage off the the drill that we've fought before. So in these sequences, something that's worth mentioning, when you're fighting against the, the saw of this, when you dodge and you get the proper dodge where she splits into the, the like the holograms as I get fucked by one off screen, always good, you can tell it's a... what's it? I forget the name of the dude who directed Metal Gear Rising, but you can tell it's his game because he likes enemies attacking you off screen for some reason. Um, you'll notice in Hideki Kamiya games, they generally don't. But this guy is not the same, you know, he's, he's a little bit more flagrant with the old smacking you off the screen thing. And I don't really mind, I've got used to it, but it's something that I wouldn't have in my game. Unless it was very signposted by a very distinct noise. Uh, but this sequence here, when you do this dodge, like uh, I failed to do just then, horrible gameplay right now, that dodge, see this? See what I'm doing? What I'm doing there is I'm pressing dodge the moment I recover from the dodge because the active frames of the attack are on top of my character. I don't like that. I don't like the idea that I have to sp spam dodge after doing a proper timed dodge to get away from damage. I think the first dodge should put you out of the distance of where the damage comes from. And the fact that it doesn't do that and, it's, and it keeps you in the pocket, and if you don't press dodge after that perfect dodge, you'll get hit. Every time. The fact it doesn't do that tells me that I think evading in this game will be more particular in how you're about to approach it. And to me it doesn't make sense. Uh, because in Bayonetta, and I know I'm going to compare it to Bayonetta and it will get contrite, but this is, you know, we're, we're in, at this moment in time, there are more games now that are Bayonetta light than there are other games, you know, and I'm at that point where I'm kind of looking for the next thing. Didn't see that coming, by the way. Uh, I've not seen too many patterns from this boss, so you'll have to uh, ignore the sloppy play. Fun boss, though. Looks, looks fun. You know, it's got everything I like from a boss. It's crazy, it's high spectacle, and it's got a great ending if you've not seen it. I just don't feel like you do too much damage when you swing at stuff. Right. But as I was saying, sorry, as I dodged some of the bullets, which can be shot, there are certain ones that can't be shot, so be aware. As I was saying, though, it, in Bayonetta, when you do one of those dodges, you are never in trouble afterwards because, of course, witch time happens. It puts you into this empowered state. And I think it's put me into this... This, like, this sense of security that doesn't exist in this game, which is going to be an adjustment period for me as a player. Oh, there are the red balls, by the way. You see the other ones? They're a bit darker. You cannot shoot those. You have to dodge them. Um, so there's definitely going to be a learning period here for me, because what I noticed a lot is when I would do a dodge into a launch, into doing combos in the air, as I would fall, I would land on people doing combos, doing attacks, and I'd take hits. And, it, and I started trying to dodge as I landed, and I was still getting clipped. So, it, it got to a point where I would attack and dodge away before I landed to come back in. Which is never something I would ever do in Bayonetta. But this is not that game. So maybe it's got to be approached slightly differently, and that's one of the mistakes that I was making. Because in Bayonetta, if you're not in the pocket, you're not doing damage. And I can stay in the pocket on that game and be aggressive while not taking damage. Because that's how I play that game. In this game, I didn't feel like 
getting the reward for a good dodge was anywhere near as powerful or empowering. It felt like it had been intentionally relaxed so that you would do it more frequently so it wouldn't be so deadly. It's like the complete antithesis of a perfect parry in Metal Gear Rising. If you didn't play that game, you should, because it's fantastic and it's by the same person who'd made this, but in that game, when you got a parry, you destroyed things. And the parry wasn't the hardest thing to do. This was not Royal Guard from Devil May Cry 3. If you've never tried Royal Guard, I don't mean jumping, I don't mean rolling, I mean raw Royal Guard. It's about as frame perfect as it gets. It's ridiculous, and the players who are good at that, those dudes are machines and I adore them. Like, that is some tricky fucking timing. Metal Gear Rising is tight, but it's doable. And it's doable to a point where it's really fun when you're on a roll. But when you land it, it kills everything. On, on Revengeance difficulty, it practically boots the, the enemies to the menu because it does that much damage. So to come to this, where you have this relaxed counter purpose, which doesn't seem like it empowers you in the way I thought it would, it's definitely an adjustment, and I'm hoping that the reason for this is that there's going to be lots of options after we do that fancy dodge to do interesting, you know, applications. Because as it stands, it's only the big fellas once you knock them up that you can juggle afterwards. Because if you juggle a big guy into the sky and then you press uh, X triangle quickly, you can launch him again, dash towards him, and then continue your combo. But then when you do that, you're, like, you're doing the same moves because there's not that many modifiers, so it doesn't really feel like it's going to be a game that's much about juggling. And I hope it is, and I hope this the demo is, is the equivalent of, remember Devil May Cry 3 at the beginning? You start with a sword and some guns and you can't do anything. You do like a four hit combo and that's it. And a jump attack. Ooh, I'm fantastic. And then at the end of the game you have all those moves. You have too many moves sometimes. You just forget them in the middle of battle because it's all crazy. I'm hoping it's going to be like that. But this bit I adored. I was going nuts on stream because this is definitely my cup of tea, proverbially. Did anybody play Lost Planet? I know I talk about that game a lot, and it's a game that you should get on PC because it's probably 60 frames per second there. But that is a really, really weird game. It's not a great game, but it's a good game, and it's got a lot of charm that builds up and makes up for its lacking qualities. At the end of that game, you'd been in these slow-ass robots for so long, you didn't remember what speed felt like. And then in the final fight, you were flying in space in something like this, and it was the most awesome moment, because you had literally been a tortoise the entire time, and then finally you were an eagle, and you were destroyed. Watch this, by the way, I'm about to take a big hit. See this? It's telegraphed 90 years away, but I didn't see it, and it, and it hit me massively, which is unfortunate. But then we, uh, we get this dude's arm, and then we get to beat him up with his arm. A lot of this doesn't make too much sense because I've trimmed the cutscenes out, but if you watch it in context, it's pretty damn fabulous. I had a lot of fun with this fight, and if this is a show of what's to come, I'm going to really, really love this game, and I can't wait to play the hell out of it, because I've been hungering a, a nice, precise action game, and Turtles did not give it me at all, because that game's a pile of shit. But I think this could be wonderful, folks, and I think there's a lot of fun to have here, so if you're on the fence or you've no idea if this is for you, please check it out. It's free. It's a trial. You know, you can run in there, you can mash buttons and you can just have a fun time. Or you can appraise it from a bit of a distance, look at it, see what all the mechanics do, see what the moves are, and maybe try and play it on a higher level and, and get better as a player and, and, and discover this genre of games where they didn't patronise you as a gamer and they actually wanted you to get better by forcing you to, or you died. And yeah, there you go, there's Nia, folks. So thank you for watching, and you take care now.